They just came up on deck after 20 minutes down below. I discovered there's a little fishing boat here. I discovered it like 10, 15 minutes ago. We were getting closer and closer, so I thought we'd uh, I'll just share with you what that looks like. Our crossings with fishing boats are always interesting. You know, in a way we want to give way to the fishing boat and take his stern, but obviously we can't do that. You can see here, he's got nets out behind. It looks like he's washing his nets to me, so they've uh, they brought the, the, the uh, latest haul on deck. They may be working the deck, working the, uh, the, the hauls, seeing, throwing back uh, stuff they can't keep. Obviously the fishing uh, has this incredible byproduct, which then the seagulls are crazy for. Around that time, they then drag the nets, the nets that will be down low doing the trawling. They then, you can see it just down the back of the boat. I'm not sure exactly how much I'll be able to zoom in uh, in the edit, but uh, you can see there's a big, thick kind of cluster of uh, stringy material right at the uh, stern, and they're just dragging that, just keeping gentle way on. But look how many birds there are there. I really like seagulls. I think they're a very interesting bird. Very hard life. They're kind. Of, I know they're like kind of uh, rats of the sky, but uh, so it's pigeons, isn't it? But and they have personality. I like that. That's a really nice fishing boat. Looks really, you know, dedicated to task. Modern and... Uh, yeah, I'd love to have a look around one of those. Wow. 
Oh, finally, we have some boobies on this channel. Okay, let's take a little step aside from the crossings for a second, have a look up at the rig on this boat. Um, big carbon fiber mast here, and these mistrals, interesting, they don't have a tip stay, and the shrouds don't go right to the very top of the mast. They only had uh, the mainsail going that high, there was no uh, mast head kite on these boats. Um, but I'm looking up here now, we've been through some heavy weather when I'm doing this, I'm checking for damage, checking for tension. I know that my starboard D2, a diagonal rigging on the starboard side just above my head there is a little bit loose on this trip. Um, but I'm going to the bow also and having a look at the tension of the forestay, how much sag there is. We've only got the little J5 up, the smallest of the headsails, so there's not much pressure on anything. But still early days with this boat setting off, uh, only a thousand miles into the trip. So I just want to make sure everything's 100 percent and see the extra halyards there for securing the rig. Always do that in case something lets go on the forestay and then I actually have a look up myself, make sure it's OK and back to the crossings. A little uh, crossing situation developing here. We've got this container ship coming in here, about 10, 12 knots coming in from port. He has to give way to me, technically. This one ahead of us here is stationary, just hanging out. And then this P&O ferry over here is crossing from right to left. The reality of him giving way to me is almost zero. On the bridge of that ship, he's got two options. Slow down, which he doesn't want to do. Doesn't want to change his RPMs. Turn to port, which would put him in completely the wrong angle to, and only forestall this issue that I'm in now. Go in a circle, which he's not about to do. So I've come up to port and I've increased my speed, which might give him basically the, the lowest rung of that ladder. Like, okay, I will reduce RPM a little bit. What I may do is come up another 20 degrees and just feather into the wind for a second and give him enough time to get to a solid position ahead of me and then come back on course. But he is the giveaway vessel. I very rarely make them give way, but I kind of need to get where I'm going here. I can't be giving way to every, every vessel in the channel. But he's been on a steady bearing over this stanchion for quite a long time now. So we'll come up. too Canadian. I don't need uh, five blasts on the horn from a uh, merchant ship that's wondering what I'm doing when I'm the bloody stand-on vessel. <laughs> that's good. We've still got a pretty, pretty tight angle here that's going to slow me down. See, I've dropped two knots already. So it slowed me down allowing him to go ahead of me and I've come up on my course so now I have moved him from this stanchion to stanchions forwards which means that he's probably going to cross in front of me. So the crossing maneuver which we were talking about it's coming to fruition now. You can see there's no way that I can actually cover the distance between myself and him. My speed dropped right down to almost seven knots. There's no way that I can cover the distance between myself and him so now I can one, two, three, turn and go back on course. And we've successfully negated any kind of an issue um, in a crossing situation. I, I think a lot of people get very nervous in crossing situations. The, the best way of looking at it is we are very small and they are very big and we should get out of their way. And you can try like Oh, I'm the stand-on vessel, and I'm a sailing vessel, and the international coal rate. Yeah, yeah, they're doing a job. We're out here for fun. Get out of their way. That doesn't mean we can't cut, like, really close behind them. <laughs> there we go. So he's just going to cross ahead of us now. Giving him about a quarter of a mile, which is easily enough. Anything inside of two miles at sea for a, uh, a big commercial vessel like that is close quarters situation. And they would not have want to see me cross this close under their bow. That would have been a big issue. But they'll have seen very clearly on their AIS, on their radar, what I did. And they'll have seen very clearly the effect it had. They saw me come back on course and I'm nice and clear here. And there we go. They can pass in front. That's a good solid crossing.
I got a lot of experience uh, crossing vessels like this when I was uh, living in Hong Kong and uh, all the sailing, all the deliveries, all the work I did there, but also the racing, like going out of, um, out of the Royal Hong Kong Yacht Club in the Middle Island, you're going down and across a shipping lane, and in Hong Kong there'd be this guy and then that guy and then that guy and then that guy, there'd be five, six, seven of them all in a line, you'd easily be able to uh, pick out where the next one was. They're all under pilot and they're not stopping, so it gives you a bit of a kind of training ground to, um, to, to try what it is that's your method of getting past vessels and make mistakes, and uh, so you can be quite slick about it, because obviously when you're racing you wouldn't want to be, you wouldn't want to be much closer than that also. The wind's actually coming from that direction, and if we got much closer it would be in, a, in the wind shadow of the ship, when he was over there we'd be in a wind shadow, so... Talk about sea monsters. Sea monsters are alive and well and running regular schedules between all major ports. Right, here we go, here's Wake. A bit nicer going over a wake like this in an 80 foot boat than in a 25 foot boat. That, that bang is the uh, backstay coming on the tension. Alright, next challenge.